Welcome to this uh, new webinar of the Laura Alliance about smart water. We are going to present different use cases with members of Laura Alliance about how to modernize water utility infrastructure, also for communities and for smart uh, facilities to provide a more efficient and sustainable operations. My name is Remy de Merle. I'm going to, to lead and moderate this webinar. First, AR our skipping notes where you can see how to fix technical settings. You will collect the slides afterwards and there will be at the end of this webinar a Q&A session where the speakers will respond to your questions. We have here today um, Jim Kilmartin from Senet, Jan Philipp Exner from Zener, Marek Bukel from Menlink and Matt Hector Taylor from IoT Ventures. Few words about the Law Alliance. We are members of the same nonprofit association that was created in 2015. Um, it's an important association for connectivity standard of LoRaWAN. We maintain, we develop the specification. We have also a LoRaWAN certification program for the end devices. That's important to provide interoperability and reliability. There are more than 400 members and more than 180 operators over the world. LoRaWAN is also a standard recognized by the International Telecommunication Union. There are few features that are important for smart metering, like the battery lifetime that can be up to 20 years, but also the capacity to have deep underground penetration for the use case, for example, of uh, smart water meters. And there are also other couple of uh, key features, security, a very good, I would say, uh, capacity to have flexible network models uh, with, for example, the new relay feature, which helps to extend coverage. So many points that are beneficial. But moreover, LoRaWAN has been very successful in uh, water utilities. Why? Perhaps because there are a couple of challenges that we will see LoRaWAN is capable to solve. Three important challenges. The first one is the water leaks, water damage in buildings, but also in a water pipe network distribution are causing more than 25% of the clean produced water to be lost physically or apparently. There is also the drama of um, population in Europe and cities that keep on growing. Today, it's more than 56% of a population, of the world population that is living in cities. It's up to seven out of 10 people that will be living in cities by 2030. We have um, here also uh, the problem of uh, the droughts that are affecting areas like in Australia where it's uh, five months in a row where there is lowest rainfalls. So uh, it's more and more a critical issue. We will have examples here also in Australia proving Laura One can benefit to help and reduce uh, the scarcity of water. Among the key requirements of uh, utilities for metering, there is uh, the long battery lifetime, there is also the SAD that count in terms of meter readings, either per month or per day. Whatever, Laura One is capable to support these requirements. It's also um, a technology that has proving um, a rich ecosystem and a capacity to provide more flexible network models than any other. It can be public, private, hybrid, community-based network. So now uh, we will, uh, without any further delay, see how a LoRaWAN operator in America is capable to uh, provide a benefit to utilities with the AMI. Jim? Thank you. Thank you, Remy, for that introduction, and uh, good day to you all. Uh, to get started, uh, a little bit about Senate. Uh, we're developers of cloud-based software and services for the on-demand deployment of IoT networks, where they're needed, when they're needed, and at the right cost, and obviously we're doing this with the LoRaWAN. 
In particular, in my remarks today, we've developed uh, significant expertise in addressing water utility metering modernization projects. We've designed well over 100 uh, water utility networks. There's hundreds of thousands of LoRaWAN AMI meters that are running on Senate and growing daily, as I'll comment on more specifically. On the right side of the slide, you see some facts and figures about us. And just to touch on a couple, we are very active members of the LoRa Alliance, founding members, uh, our, our CTO, COO is uh, on the board of directors. We've uh, been awarded multiple patents in the LoRaWAN field, and we're proud to say that our platform has 100% uh, uptime. And next here, I'm highlighting the three primary service offerings that Senate delivers into the utility space, uh, described in the three boxes that you see here. And one key message that I want to impart being that LoRaWAN provides utilities with flexible service delivery options. It's not one size fits all. Uh, it's not a one size fits all proposition. So the first uh, model uh, called out here being what we call PaaS or platform as a service. In this model, the utility purchases their own radio access network infrastructure gateways, and uh, they manage and operate the network infrastructure themselves. Secondly, NAS. Uh, NAS, in this model, uh, the AMI services utilize a network that's built and owned by somebody else. And in particular, uh, today, I'd like to speak about uh, Senate's expertise in that realm, uh, and I'll have some uh, specific examples. Thirdly here, uh, whoever the RAN operator is or the RAN provider uh, is uh, Senate provides a robust set of network management tools that are used to monitor and manage the health of the network. And on the far right, I would want to point out to you that Senate has designed uh, and patented what we call our Senate LP WAN virtual network. And it's dis uh, whoever owns and operates the RF canopy that's delivering the AMI service, AMI service can get paid uh, for other LoRaWAN services to use their network. And it's a really compelling uh, ROI model when you add second and third services and so on onto the platform. Helium I'll touch on a little bit later. Uh, in this slide here, uh, this is a depiction of the processes that uh, Senate undertakes to design and build carrier grade LoRaWAN networks. And, this webinar is not the forum for diving into this in any detail. I just wanted to share a Senate's expert view and make a couple of points. The first being that the entire uh, AMI network deployment and operation, uh, operational process can be carried out in as little as 90 to 120 days, which is really the blink of an eye when you put that in the context of the 15 to 20 years that a utility will be uh, uh, leveraging uh, this network. Secondly, I wanted to just point out that, uh, take a moment to speak about the front end of the process, if you will, the network design phase, uh, which as I commented earlier, we've done more than a hundred of these. Uh, a utility design for AMI can be created well in advance of, uh, or as a precursor of, of the actual project commitment, and it can serve to well inform, uh, you know, utility services planning. So. My proposition on this front is that if you're a water utility or if you're an engineering uh, firm or a city or, or a meter manufacturing rep or distributor, let's have a conversation about Senate creating a LoRaWAN network design for you. No commitment uh, whatsoever, uh, a design that's specific uh, to your requirements. Now uh, to share with you a couple of Senate LoRaWAN uh, network reference cases. First, this is a real life example of a Senate LoRaWAN AMI service uh, in operation in California. Uh, the utility, I would just uh, say, is a small to medium sized utility. The meters deployed are in pits outside of residences and Senate's NAS uh, solution was built and quickly put into operation here. The network was created using a combination of municipal assets and commercial towers, as is often the case. More than half the meters were quickly operationalized uh, within six months. And the ramp went really well. The utility carried on to achieve uh, full services deployment in just over a year. And uh, they shared with us their take on a number of uh, significant service improvements they were realizing as a result. You can see them noted, such as their being able to eliminate third party reading company, uh, meter reading company contracts 
and uh, significant reductions in, in uh, revenue loss. So, so the picture on the right depicts the uh, utilities uh, network coverage area, and in fact, the tools that I mentioned earlier, uh, Senate's tools uh, there as well for uh, to show performance. And uh, if you want to know more about this case study, uh, there's a link there and you can access that uh, yourselves. Uh, next, as we carry on, this next uh, reference case is uh, quite a bit more expansive. Senate built the single largest carrier grade metropolitan coverage area lower wind network in North America a few years back now, and it's enabling uh, lower wind network service throughout the entire uh, Tampa St. Pete uh, region. And we're talking here on the order of uh, 80, uh, 64 channel uh, lower wind gateways dispersed throughout the region. And the utility I'm referencing are really happily leveraging this network and they're growing their service points daily. Uh, again, it's Senate NAS, uh, it, infrastructure is owned and operated uh, by Senate on behalf of our metering partner. And if you'd like to know more about this one, uh, I reference on this slide a video. If you go to look at the video, you'll see and hear the utility themselves speaking about uh, how they're using the network, how it's improved their water metering services, and uh, their excitement about plans to broaden the utilization of the network uh, to add further uh, smart utility and smart city services uh, over time. Next, I'd be uh, remiss in delivering my uh, Laura Wan uh, AMI service delivery innovation and market leadership remarks if I did not uh, touch on helium. And so for those that uh, may not know what helium is, it's helium is known as the, the, the people's network. And it's a crowdsourced uh, uh, network consisting of lower wind gateways that are known as uh, miners, which are bought and installed by individuals, put on in, uh, windowsills in people's homes, uh, sometimes put out on rooftops and, and garages, roofs and so on. Most major metropolises in the US have a fair amount of helium coverage in place. Uh, perhaps a little less uh, helium coverage today than a, a couple of years back, but uh, in any case, the um, this the example in this slide, uh, pictures in the right show uh, the New York City metropolitan area, and um, with helium in purple and Senate coverage shown in green. And of course, again, I've mentioned that if you utilize Senate tools, you can have a look at this yourselves. Um, and uh, just note, to note to you as well that uh, Senate's coverage in New York is, is really expansive, uh, helium aside. So uh, what's relevant here to the AMI uh, water use case is that helium can be leveraged uh, and it is being uh, leveraged by Senate in the AMI realm, but just to be sure, it's providing network coverage redundancy uh, in some areas, uh, helium can add uh, incremental gains to SA, SLA coverage uh, commitments and performance, but the Senate is not uh, ever, you know, of course, relying on uh, helium to meet uh, SLA requirements for utilities. Okay, uh, next up is in the way of what's new for utilities uh, for AMI. Uh, let me do a quick flyover, excuse the pun, uh, to describe satellite, satellite service uh, developments that are underway. Senate are uh, working very closely with LoRaWAN ecosystem partners around LoRaWAN uh, satellite services enablement. The Alliance is very active, uh, in, actively involved as well. The potential for satellite to enable AMI in rural areas where density of services are more spread out, or in some scenarios where the utility services base may be smaller uh, and the economics of deploying fixed space networking uh, are a challenge, satellite holds the promise to really be a game changer. Um, now, no doubt satellite coverage uh, is uh, still at its early stages. The, as I say, the pace of commercialization is, uh, is accelerating. It's early days, uh, more on this uh, in 2024 uh, and beyond. Uh, next, uh, I would speak for a moment or two here about uh, the category of uh, LoRaWAN capabilities that are uh, able to be put in use once your anchor application, say for AMI, uh, is, is in place. 
This is a view of just a handful of the LoRaWAN enabled sensors and services that are available to be uh, laid on. Uh, once a network, you know, you know, once the utility owns and operates uh, uh, the network. One perspective I raise here being that a, and I've heard this uh, num numerous occasions, of course, is that the, a utility or a water district uh, might look at what I'm presenting here and say, well, you know, I'm interested in, in improving my water metering service. That's my purview. That's what I'm focused on. That's my world, not beyond. And, and okay, I get it. Um, but when you're, uh, when you're making the move to AMI metering, the fact is that you're investing in, in a network. You have to make a choice. And that network is going to be in place for 15, 20 years, uh, possibly more. Why limit your uh, innovative service expansion options or those options for your community? And I say, uh, think beyond the read, if you will. And this is what uh, LoRaWAN makes possible. And just to touch on uh, a few uh, of these uh, capabilities that you, you'll see up here. For water and water infrastructure monitoring, there are sensors and services that uh, support remote monitor monitoring of pumps, lift stations, water wells, uh, much more. Uh, I, I'd uh, point out to you that there are gas uh, solutions available here for uh, gas metering um, and uh, leak detectors, shutoff valves are, are, are all available. So if a, a water utility, for example, has a uh, gas service uh, in their in their area well then there's a potential for both the gas and the water to utilize the same LoRaWAN network and uh, consider the significant ROI potential uh, uh, that that represents assets tracking just to point out another uh, if you have expensive equipment perhaps in the field that you want to keep track of remotely trucks tools compressors and so on uh, there's LoRaWAN sensors and services available to from numerous sources that can support that. And finally, I'd point out uh, or just mention air quality. You know, municipalities, uh, school districts, hospitals, uh, commercial and residential real estate companies are focusing on bringing uh, buildings into compliance with emerging emerging new air quality standards. And LoRaWAN's perfect for this. There's a number of sensors and services that are doing this. So. I would say to you again, if you'd like to learn more, uh, let's have a conversation. Uh, finally, in, in summary, I'd say uh, LoRaWAN is uh, some takeaways. It's really well proven to deliver utility services in scale, AMI services and beyond. It provides ultimate flexibility when it comes to service delivery models, NAS, PaaS, uh, or hybrid networks designs are available. Of course, it's all open standards bases, as Remy has described. Uh, choose lower win, and you're not just solving for uh, water modernization objectives. You're putting in place a network framework that you can layer additional services on for your community for years and years to come. There's no vendor lock-ins. Um, and uh, as I mentioned uh, just briefly, that when you're, if you choose Senate, to be your LoRaWAN network provider. You can even generate new revenue streams from the investments you make uh, in LoRaWAN. So I'll leave it there and I'll thank you for your time. Uh, just uh, one more slide where I, I have uh, organized a whole bunch of Senate materials that are available at the links uh, that you see here. And now I will turn the floor over to Jan Philippe from Center. Thank you, Tim. Um, Ken Philip Exman, my name from Zener, and I'm very happy to have the, um, the possibility to hold this presentation here with the topic, uh, the title Smart Water Utilities for LoRaWAN as Sustainable Digital Infrastructure for Smart Cities. My background itself is from urban planning, so this is why I have the smart city perspective um, that I'm bringing also here to our utilities sector. And uh, I will give some insights from the perspective in Germany where the smart city topic uh, is uh, quietly uh, being upscaling in the last years and there are some special um, yeah corporations together with the utility sector first of all uh, some of you know the Zener and the Minul Zener group I just want to give some key facts about it that we are having this year our 120th birthday and we are dealing all of the time with water meters 
um, since then, but um, uh, this is also the reason why we are part of the LoRa Alliance Group since many years. We are um, seeing the potentials for the IoT market since a couple of years, and we're seeing here also um, in this whole sector, sector uh, a lot of uh, prospective benefits uh, for us and for the whole market. Um, what I also want to say is that we have uh, with, with Zena Connect, our, one of the our biggest uh, Central Europe network providers, with uh, at the moment more than 70,000 gateways in Central Europe in the field. And um, actually, there are more than 5 million of IoT sensors. So these are water meters and smart city sensors together, which are actively uh, in the field and are working. And um, when it comes also to the point of digital infrastructure um, for IoT, I just shortly want to say that we consider them as four um, modules, this is the devices, the connectivity, the platforms, and the services. And what I want to focus today here during my presentation is the connectivity sector, and also this is what is actually lower one about, because um, what I also are giving today is the feedback from our customers, which are telling us why they choose LoRaWAN and why LoRaWAN is good for them to uh, run up their business uh, in a sustainable manner. Because um, you may have to know that we have the situation in Germany that the communities, um, they do not have their, how to say, public authorities to run uh, the utilities. They are two separate bodies. So we have a situation that we um, see uh, some more complicated models of cooperation. And the question is about who is running the network for whom and who is participating. And this is uh, also one of the reasons why we are um, highlighting the use of LoRaWAN very much because the big ecosystem brings a lot of advantages and this is also what we're getting back from our customers as feedback. So the, the two trends when it comes uh, to IoT in the last years is that we have at the utility side that the, the, the AMI is really ramping up at the moment and we are seeing this that even also smaller utilities are now are uh, focusing their investments there. And then the other side, the smart city developments. But the smart city developments are at the moment mostly uh, being driven by funding issues um, by the political side. But what they both have together, it is they need a reliable, flexible, and achievable technical digital infrastructure. And this is where Loa One comes into place. And this is why we also are seeing much, uh, most of the use cases being run by Loa One. And also when you see those beautiful images from the Alliance about what are the typical use cases for either utilities and cities, um, I just briefly highlighted some of the, the most um, important use cases for both sides. And they're partly, to, partly the same, but you see there are Um, and um, there are a lot of potentials also with the whole network, with the whole ecosystem to run those use cases. When it comes to sustainability, you can just mainly distinguish between uh, the economical, the social, and the ecological perspective. And this is also what uh, often customers asking us about how we can, in a way, bring up those use cases. And when it comes to water, you can also, in a way, roughly divide them into those uh, um, sections that you have the traditional AMI uh, part being, in a way, successful from an economical point of perspective, or is uh, social perspective in terms of uh, warning from flood preventions. And also, some ecological points are also um, parts that I want to give some little insights about what uh, our customers are doing in those fields. So when it comes to traditional uh, AMI metering, um, we have in Germany, like most other countries, some regulations about uh, water billing um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, circumstances. And this is where the use from uh, LoRaWAN directly pays out. And the basic infrastructure from LoRaWAN is uh, providing a very good field for this one. And just to give a brief example, we have uh, from our, one of our customers, the Stromnetze Hamburg, um, uh, the, the feedback that they had as one of our first bigger um, uh, reference projects. They had a whole quarter with 1,200 submeter sensors, and they just were 
getting them with uh, three gateways and also in the also in the underground floors with a very brilliant um, signal quality. And this is where they just said, well, with this kind of LoRaWAN setting, we clearly can do very successful business cases. If you're interested more in those use cases, you can just scan those little QR codes on the right hand bottom and um, a YouTube link also with English subtitles will open it. And um, just for giving you a brief example, what we are offering in terms of uh, lower one capable IoT uh, sensor solutions, water meters and every kind of uh, size and also um, little uh, adapters for also making the old use cases in a retrofitting way of um, doing it smart. What we are also doing is the um, the part of um, the water uh, monitoring in terms of flood prevention um, and in the point that um, we have utility um, customers who are also first come from the um, classical metering I want to say and then they are also cooperating with their cities and the cities are telling them that we have potentially uh, dangerous rivers there but they have not the capabilities at the first um, point to do the use case in this way. And so they're getting um, or they're asking the public utilities to um, help them out in this way. And this is where um, they also can use the same infrastructure with LoRaWAN because the ecosystem provides a wide priority of sensors and they can share those um, those connectivity, and as we just heard also with our previous speakers, that the that the uh, the potentials that you have there to to use your LoRaWAN is uh, very manifold, and uh, you can either open it up and you can close up your networks, and this um, brings for the uh, for this complex settings you often had also from a political point of perspective, um, a very good um, potentials for use cases here. And there also, for this little example, we are here had from the city of Schwerte, which is in uh, Northern Westphalia in Germany. They also started at the beginning with a set in the city center there with 100 uh, bigger water meters. And then they just said, okay, we have here this riverbed being uh, covered with um, uh, 15 flooding sensors. And then they also, um, uh, in this case, just used there with 20 gateways to cover the wider area of this field. Potential sensors you can use in this way, and this is when it comes also to the ecosystem, are very wide because we have uh, uh, the ultrasonic uh, distance uh, sensors for uh, detecting the river height or also the, um, the water pressure um, uh, sensors and uh, we also had the, for instance in the, in the flooding point of perspective a lot of customers were using very different settings because it depends on the, the local circumstances and what is the potential to implement the sensor how can I gather them how can I uh, in a way prevent them from vandalism or etc etc and this is also the point when uh, when you're not just making a proof of concept, but when you're just scaling it up, and this is the point where the customers come to say, well, LoRaWAN is really good because we have such a wide market of sensors with a good price uh, quality, and this helps us really to making the use case uh, valuable. And also, uh, we're seeing uh, a lot of customers coming to us with having um, new ideas, also starting research projects, and also saying, well, we have complex issues, like not just only seeing water in terms of flooding, but we want to measure the, the soil moisture and the tree health together because we want to adapt what kind of uh, water is being um, getting to the trees to, to uh, water them. And so what we often use there is different kind of setting. And um, yeah, for instance, there the LoRaWAN basic infrastructure uh, provides the best connectivity and also here within the QR code you can get some more information about it. Also having here a little view what kind of sensors can be seen there, but it also, as I said, helps to um, in a way understand what is possible. And then again, when it comes, how do I run this infrastructure or the question is there's a business case when it comes to metering, it often pays out directly. When it comes to typical smart city use cases, it's more um, yeah, uh, difficult to say, but 
both of them are interacting with each other and uh, a lot of customers telling us, well, actually our AMI infrastructure is paying out more or less all of the smart city use cases. And this is a, a point which is very crucial to know. And at this point, I'm also coming to the key takeaways. And um, this is where the people, at least in Germany, the perspective is coming from coming from the POC to the long-term perspective and saying, well, if you're upscaling, we also want to understand how is it working with long-term costs. And uh, this um, maintaining costs for the infrastructure is uh, where the, um, as I just said, where the cooperation with the utility is very important because often the hard utility infrastructure is paying out a lot of um, experimental smart city use cases. And there comes definitely the point that we are saying LoRaWAN is the best uh, choice, even in terms of the big ecosystem, because it just provides the, the best priority uh, in terms of price, um, sensors, and uh, just um, also ideas. And, and so, yeah, in, in this way, uh, we're getting a lot of very positive feedback in terms of LoRaWAN from our customers. This is what, what, to, what I want to share with the group here. And um, yeah, I'm ending also with my presentation here and uh, hand off uh, my um, virtual microphone to Marek. So stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Today, I uh, will speaking about uh, evolution in a conservative market, I would say, uh, which is a preferred way of moving forward instead of a revolution. Uh, when we just jump in with a full uh, transformation offering. Um, key facts about uh, Mainlink, we are part of Icor Group, uh, which uh, owns more than 100 companies uh, that operate in utility, real estate, manufacturing, meters, energy sector, uh, and Mainlink focusing solely on IoT solutions for utilities and sub-metering companies. Our approach is to offer hardware and network agnostic platform, connecting most popular meter brands like Deal, Camstrup, Sensus, Axioma, what you name it, on uh, and on different communication channels. We can also provide end-to-end -end water and energy metering when needed, uh, starting from meters itself up to gateways from our partners and then lower network server as well from from our partners. Uh, we add services like network health monitoring, taking ownership of the troubleshooting for our customers. Conversion of legacy systems is a big one too. Uh, we are fans of making gradual transition rather than one-time transformation, which can look uh, scary sometimes. Uh, we help reaching final cons consumer uh, with a residential app, uh, which helps increasing awareness. And also uh, we add other use cases uh, to benefit from the lower infrastructure when it's in place. Um, with uh, use cases for facility management companies, for schools with temperature monitoring, which we uh, recently deployed, and uh, some others as well. On the right, you will see some figures about the holding group. And uh, uh, let's jump to the current technologies used for smart metering. Uh, uh, you can find uh, pulse meters with some uh, external endpoints. Uh, you can find encoded meters uh, with uh, some endpoints. Uh, we, some smart metering is done by walk by drive by uh, wireless ambulance. Um Physical visit is not a technology, of course, uh, but rather a way of getting the data from the meter, which is still uh, in place in a lot of areas. And then you have fixed network like LoRaWAN, NBUT, and some others. Uh, and all of them uh, have some limitations. Uh, some of them have a lack of actionable data. Well, most of them. Um, some of uh, them uh, have limited choice of endpoints and network infrastructure. Uh, with uh, walk by drive by data is read usually once a month or even less often. Uh, and you normally will not have live leak detection. Uh, and some are proprietary or locked to one uh, provider. And LoRaWAN being an open standard can solve uh, some of these challenges or pretty much all of them. Um, LoRaWAN allows to digitize existing infrastructure, uh, eliminating a need of uh, exchanging uh, all the components at once. Uh, so basically it's less investment if installed in the field meters can be reused. Uh, no rapid changes, especially in the conservative market, it's a good thing. Uh, single solution for different use cases, uh, connecting multiple technologies into one single hub, eliminate, eliminating most questionable components uh, of the old solution before it start generating uh, any financial losses. And after 
these small changes, a uh, company can benefit from network health monitoring, uh, live leak detection, um, balancing of DMAs uh, or one building level, um, and of course, automated data transmission and uh, proactive maintenance. Um, other benefits for utilities and sub-metering companies, uh, it's easier administration, having less uh, components to take care of, uh, which also means we uh, reduced uh, carbon footprint and, and waste of uh, the hardware that is uh, coming to the end of life. Uh, interoperability using LoRaWAN as a connection hub in a conjunction with either cellular or standalone uh, is, is also a clear benefit. Uh, and while sustainability initiatives are getting momentum, residents um, are the ones that can really make a difference. Uh, that is why education and increasing awareness can lead to more sustainable resource usage. Um, getting real-time data on both metering and uh, leaks can dramatically decrease repair costs of, uh, for utilities, uh, property owners, and even uh, residents. Uh, having more data uh, can help prevent breakdowns, and new technologies allow troubleshooting uh, remotely too. Uh, one of the use cases uh, implemented, uh, implementing digitalization solution uh, was uh, for property management company in Netherlands uh, doing sub-metering for their residential building uh, buildings, and there was a clear need of getting more frequent um, data. Previously using uh, walk-by, drive-by for water metering, uh, we offered them a, a lower one to digitize without exchanging meters. Uh, they just needed to uh, implement uh, wireless ambus two LoRa LoRa one converters and LoRa one gateways, of course. And the cost saving was uh, from first year. Um, I will show in the next slide some calculation. So speaking numbers, um, they had uh, one thousand meters in total and calculated uh, expenses, making sure we include not just uh, system cost but the rest of expenses uh, and not even taking uh, into account potential liabilities that can occur uh, and increase these numbers dramatically. So we calculated uh, the salary of the person collecting the data, the transportation costs, fuel costs, and insurance needed per year. Uh, and it came to uh, the total OPEX of 20 euro per meter per year. Um, and then we, uh, with our offering, uh, of course, they had to make some initial, initial investment of CapEx, but uh, the total, uh, came, top, total CapEx was already covered with uh, one year of their OPEX, and uh, all the next year would be a, um, a, an earning. So, so it was um, 9 euro per meter per year total uh, each next year. Uh, one more example where technology brought visible benefits and helped to avoid claims. Uh, in the new construction, we implemented uh, our end-to-end -end solution from the meter to the analytics and everything in between. And from week one, we noticed a negative uh, balancing values, which is rather rare, as when non-revenue water normally happens, residential meters show uh, lower consumption than the introductory meter. Uh, and here was vice versa. Um, so um, what we did, uh, and we, we checked for any um, water uh, inputs, uh, meter, meter installed in circulation loop, it was also negative. Uh, malfunctioning water heating system, no meter firmware bug, also it was not the case. Um, the true reason was the backflow. And uh, what have been done? Uh, backflow valves installed on the residential meters, backflow alerts set to critical, and now we're considering also excluding backflow water from the calculation for the reporting purposes uh, as the as next steps. Um, and when I mentioned uh, uh, including re residents, uh, I meant the app, which we have as mainlink. Uh, app primarily goal increasing awareness on efficient consumption. Um, of course, you can get alert notifications uh, informing about leaks uh, or bursts uh, to prevent damages. Uh, the, the resident can call a quick assistance with a service button, and then future plans are, are to include gamification as well. Um, and one of the examples uh, of idea that they really liked, uh, not only to save money, but to dedicate saved amount 
uh, for the charity of your choice uh, can really make a difference changing the, the mindset of the of the consumer. Um, so that's it on my side. Uh, you can find me on the details uh, below and I'll pass to you. Um, Matt Hector Taylor, floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mayor. So my name is Matt Hector Taylor. Uh, I'm from an organisation called IoT Ventures. We design and build end to end Laura Wan solutions, and if we can, we turn those into businesses. We're a New Zealand based company. We are also deploying our solutions in Australia, South Pacific, starting to move into Africa and also engaging in the UK, Europe, and North America. I'm going to talk to you about some of the end to end solutions that we've been involved in to do with water management and some of the lessons that we've learned. So the world seems to be a crazy place at the moment. Every week we see pictures of flooding. These uh, photos are from around the world, but the one on the top right is actually in my city, and this was in, in February of this year. However, against the sort of overuse of water or too much water, we're seeing too little water in reservoirs and water tables. Um, and in a number of different places, including the, the South Pacific, this is a, an atoll as the, as the water levels dry up and the, and, and the sea levels rise and take out the water tables. We're also seeing water in the wrong places. A lot of water infrastructure was built a long time ago, but now with larger populations, greater demands, deferred maintenance and rapid changes in, in water availability, infrastructure is not doing as well as it needs to. In my country alone, we're looking at a $110 billion bill to uh, re recover our water infrastructure and, and bring it up to a, to a suitable level. So as we know, a lot of water is not managed. Also, we have significant issues with non-revenue water, uh, unmetered household use, water being used for services that aren't, aren't charged. And as cities and utilities are looking to, to manage their uh, water more co comprehensively, we can see more and more kind of complexity in the in the overall water ecosystem and water infrastructure, and more efforts needed to try to bring all of that together in one place to help people people manage and understand what's going on. We've been working with a number of, of companies in the water industry from different places and different perspectives. They all have common issues, but they all have a slightly different take on them. We're looking at things to do with water storage and the ability to manage in times of drought and water scarcity, water take where there's limited uh, ability or limited water to, to be distributed a number of people that need it, water quality issues, water infrastructure issues in terms of visibility and control, and irrigation and, uh, and, and water use and water control. Underlying all of these projects, which are all slightly different, there are two key themes. The importance of Laura Wan as a, as a network provider uh, and, and solution, and the need for a more bespoke or custom end to end solution to deliver true value. So, why is Laura Wan so important for water? I think we've heard a lot about the, the device use and, and I mean the power use and, and the fact that, that we get a long time out of a battery. But really the key strength of LoRaWAN is the ability to fill in coverage gaps. If we look at this picture of New Zealand, the whole white area is where there's no cell phone coverage. So you can imagine that there's also no, no LoRaWAN coverage. When we get down to local areas, all of those blocks in white have no coverage from a, from a gateway. So being able to manage coverage and fill in coverage is really critical. This is Auckland. This is our sort of largest metropolitan area. At the top of this tower is a, is a Laura Wan base station, and we're getting 40 kilometres range from that. Our office, though, is four kilometres from that tower, but we get no Laura Wan coverage at all because we're behind a, a small mountain or a volcano. So the ability for Laura Wan to actually cover long distances, but also fill in those distances because it's unlicensed spectrum and then use additional features like relays. And we're starting to also put satellites into our solutions, uh, gives a whole kind of range of, of flexibility. 
Laurel Wen also is bi-directional and we use that a lot from a kind of one way up, which is taking readings, but also if we want to control things and we want to configure the devices that we're putting out into the field. So we have a kind of a cost effective, not locked in, put in your own gateway, put in your own network or work the network provider and build a hybrid model and bring down your costs, increase your flexibility. So I'm going to talk about three um, unique case studies, really, that basically um, talk to customer value and the need to develop individual solutions. So this first one's based in the South Pacific. And as we saw in that earlier photo, there's a, a lot of pressure on, on remote communities and islands as the sea levels rise and, and the water table becomes salty. So more communities are reliant on rainwater or surface water, and they're also facing long periods without rain and um, are increasingly reliant on shipped water or tanked water if, if they run out. So the goal for this project was to develop a, a, an end-to-end -end solution that would support communities manage their water more effectively. So we built uh, a series of sensors in community water tanks and residential water tanks to measure water level. That we looked at actual rainfall and forecast, rain, forecast rainfall, daily usage of water to predict runout, and to then calculate a drought stage of either a sort of the, there's an early warning stage or a critical shortage, and then notifying governments and agencies that were aid agencies and community water managers that existed on the island to help the communities engage with behaviour change that saved water. So basically the solution provides a, a, a water status, daily water status, but also the ability for the community to and the community water managers to engage and, and, and save water in times of shortage. Non-revenue water has a number of kind of key themes if you're going to um, tackle it. Dividing the, um, the network into smaller sub areas, focusing on leak detection and, um, and resolution. Thinking about the, the network as a whole rather than just kind of thinking about smart meters, but actually what's stored uh, where's the flow, where are the isolation valves, what else can you measure, and then taking all of that data and making it available to end users and to, um, to the infrastructure managers to be able to manage the water performance and identify faults quickly. And so this is an example of, a, of, of us starting to, to build sub metered zones and then making data on flow and storage and for individual circuits available on both mobile phone and, and um, web for residents and for um, the, the infrastructure teams. The third example, we're managing water that has a limited, um, that, that's basically customers are given a consent to take a certain amount of water each day at a certain speed um, that they are required to report against that. Every 15 minutes they have to, to, to record how much water they're taking. So this solution basically monitors the water take but also gives them a warning if they're breaching their thresholds. Um, and because we know that sometimes we can need to recover data if these messages don't always get through. The devices store data on board and then the back end enables the, the end user to retrieve data in the event of any missed messages. So what are some of the lessons that we've learned about delivering end-to-end -end solutions? The first one is that you need to be thinking end-to-end. -end. So there's a number of different skills you need to have in your team design, understanding what the business value is, the business problem, being able to kind of deliver a device and firmware, and yes, there are a lot of things off the shelf, but you also need to be able to deliver a bespoke solution. Putting that together in a hybrid network, being able to build out your kind of cloud systems, and then field testing uh, and delivery. In most businesses, you need a number of, of applications. In an IoT system, you need 
uh, an end-to-end -end ability to start from the sort of firmware and the device, so understanding what data you're actually capturing, being able to update that, understand the messages, calibrate the data and do diagnostics on the data you're getting through, then build a customised application for an end user. And we find that in many cases that we're building all of that on top of a core that we've developed with a number of kind of common features, including network management, customer management, message management, uh, coverage management, property and area, and the ability to sort of develop um, from the time series and bucket sort of data management. So all of those are, are in a common platform that we've developed and are going to make open source in the next year. And finally, you need to apply a structured approach. IoT is complex. Um, and so working through end-to-end, -end, understanding what the business problem is, and then working through to design a solution that brings the best out of system, network and devices key. And basically, we see that beyond the, just the sort of engineering focus, you really need to work on value, um, building the sort of end-to-end -end solution and how you optimise it, thinking about operations, how is this going to work when you're, when you're running it in the field um, and you're having to go long distances to maintain things and understanding exactly what it is that you're measuring. So thanks very much for your time. I'll hand back to, to Remy now to close. Thank you, Matt. Thank you all the, to all the speakers. Uh, here are my um, five takeaways. Um, with uh, those use cases, with those examples, we can see uh, the technology is doing uh, right, uh, is providing more sustainable usage. It's also uh, very important to consider the key advantage of flexible network models from uh, public to private, uh, small to large. Also, the capacity to enhance smart cities, to have a large ecosystem of multiple sensors of any type, and a proven results. So I will uh, illustrate with uh, three examples. For example, here, uh, IoT Ventures is proving non-revenue water reduction with numerous use cases that helps to, waste, uh, to reduce waste and to minimize water usage. Senate has also proven smart metering and is able to uh, reduce carbon emission with uh, drive-by readings. So um, it's a large OPEX reduction for utilities. Zener also uh, illustrates how AMI for utilities is benefiting to smart cities. Indeed, it creates in Germany many examples of smart city adoption and uh, also main link. For example, illustrated well the importance of customer information. So with that, I want also to uh, deliver an uh, important message. The Law Alliance has certified more than 100 devices for water management that include metering, but also pressure, water level, water quality probe, water smart valve, etc. Many of those meter or device manufacturers have certified products, they, and they are available across the world. It's important to mention the system integrators, operators that were present in this webinar are also part of this ecosystem and use those devices. And uh, now to uh, also say we start the uh, next, next uh, and the final uh, session of the Q question and answer. is for um, uh, Jan Philippe. Uh, that's about uh, the um, uh, other solution that uh, you can deploy in your network at first smart metering. Can you tell us more about experience and deployments you have seen? Um, yes. Uh, in terms of the smart water solution, there are often classical water solutions uh, for AMI for metering issues, but also there are um, uh, utilities we know we do, uh, they do condition monitoring for water pumps, for instance. So um, it isn't just the classical AMI, but 
still attached to the water utilities. And furthermore, if there are net provider for the lower one, and so there, they can also share the network with other utilities in the city. Good. Um, so that's one. Uh, the other question I see is about uh, the, the trend in terms of funding for water utility projects. Uh, in short, is that uh, government entities or private sector that are, I would say, triggering projects? Um, could you reply to this uh, question uh, um, from the group? Um, perhaps the Senate, you have uh, seen uh, different ways U.S. especially? Yes, certainly. Um, here in the U.S., um, we're seeing a significant uh, federal uh, instituted infrastructure funding that is being provided in the way of grants and loans, uh, et cetera, for water infrastructure improvements that uh, are also, I'd say, on a state level as well that are, that are, uh, are being complemented. Uh, by uh, modernization projects and water quality infrastructure as well. So we're seeing probably more investment from the public uh, side of the house than we have in, in years here in the US. Uh, and to complement that, I can testify that we, in Europe, we see, for example, in Spain, uh, in Italy, uh, some national programs for investment in uh, water management and uh, that's triggered or that's driven by the need of reducing the non-revenue water or the physical or apparent losses. Another question is about uh, the satellite usage of communication for water metering. Um, do you have an example of water metering or other application that is using connectivity by satellite, perhaps a matector from a IoT Venture? Do you have uh, some examples? Yes, yeah, sure, thanks. Um, so we, we do have a, an example of a satellite solution where we have the, the actual sensor is enclosed in concrete under the ground um, and, the, and the satellite sensor is, is above the, the ground. So certainly the ability to um, measure and meter underground and use the satellite available. Okay. Um... There are some uh, members of the Alliance, uh, Telsa, De Costa, Lacuna, they, they have um, started uh, to provide services, uh, I know that. Um, one other point I see is um, how is it reliable to implement a smart water solution for a city using uh, water meters with a pulse output? That means uh, a separated communication device to be connected to, to the existing water meter. Um, do you have an experience with that, either Senet or um, Zener? The question about pulse outputs, I mean, pulse, out, uh, pulse output uh, readings are, are quite commonly utilized in the AMI world. Uh, that's not, yeah, for sure, I can, I can attest to that, uh, no doubt. Yeah. With the meter interface unit, we have already an example of um, this kind of solution um, in the US market. They are connected by um, a three-wire cable to um, the water unit and the communication uh, and, and antenna are prolonged by a cable. Um, that's an example. Uh, there is also um, first reader available uh, in the lower one. Uh, you can see many of those in the catalog of the Alliance website. Um, another question that we've seen is, uh, are any of these urban communities to experience crowding on the network? So that's a question of uh, saturation. Um, and how is it simple to install more gateways to handle this? Uh, so I will first ask uh, Marek from Menli to um, let us know what they experiment in terms of problems of saturation in networks and how is it easy to install gateways. And then uh, I will ask Zener to complement. 
I think at this moment we are lacking the end nodes on the on the infrastructure that is available. So I think we would like to expand with more use cases to actually reach this point when we overcrowd the the network. At this moment, I don't think it's 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 uh, too uh, big an issue. Uh, but if so, then of course, uh, first of all, there are multiple channels which can be used to avoid this collision. And second is, if we reach this level, then we can just implement more more gateways uh, as a Let's say a worst case scenario. Okay, and uh, Ian Philippe, you want to complement? Uh, yeah, just that the uh, LoRaWAN provides a uh, very good flexibility that you have, for instance, also outdoor and indoor gateways. So it just depends on the use case, what kind of installation provides what kind of coverage, and it's so it's on the also on the customer, the net provider side to decide just the connectivity uh, as they want and as they need it. Okay, um, I had also a question from the, from the group uh, about uh, the use of uh, shut off valve. Um, we know, for example, the uh, Strega, they have a smart valve um, that's made in Belgium and that's a certified device. Um, do you have an um, example of a uh, use cases using smart valve um, in your uh, network or management for what uh, either you, Jan Philippe, or uh, perhaps uh, Marek in smart building that can also be uh, useful to avoid uh, leaks? But not directly with the smart valve, but we uh, combined it with um, making condition monitoring with pumps and so we have separate uh, in this case netfox leakage detectors which are combined in our platform and help us to monitoring the pump um, the, the water um, the groundwater pumps in order it's uh, in the lower parts of germany where they just need to measure it and uh, so it helps them order to run their infrastructure yeah, and so important to mention uh, with uh, LoRa One, you have um, the Class B and Class C that allows you to have uh, either on beacon frequent synchronization or with a Class C continuous mode, so that you can uh, activate a smart valve or uh, open or shut off at any time without too much latency. Um, so we, we so Matt, please, Matt, continue. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, sorry, we, we do have a smart valve, uh, remote valve solution that operates on Class A and, and, and Class C. So if you do need, um, if, if you don't mind latency, then, then LoRaWAN's bi-directional capabilities mean that you can deliver, you know, remote, remote isolation valves for leak detection. Um, we also use it for control solution for, for valves and, and schedule the patient. Um, is a and um, thank you, Matt. And to, to finish uh, this webinar, um, last question. Um, could you, each of you, uh, let the audience know what are the benefits of using uh, LoRaWAN um, instead of any other wireless uh, connectivity solution? For water management again. Uh, Jim, do you want to begin? Well, the wi widespread coverage, long, long battery life, uh, the open standards-based design, I think, is uh, one of the most attractive features around LoRaWAN because of the innovation that stems from that open standards-based uh, foundation that is going to enable many, many myriad untold services to be able to be added on to a water meter environment over the coming years. Okay, um, Jan Philippe, do you want to complement? He nearly touched all the important points, but I just want to point out again that uh, beside the technology, the ecosystem is a very crucial point. The ecosystem for the devices, for the gateways, uh, just the, the worldwide uh, market which is um, still growing uh, just uh, shows the perspective that uh, in this IoT market, LoRaWAN will definitely play an important role in the next years. Okay, uh, and then uh, 
Uh, Matt, um, what's your opinion? Oh, Marek, Weaver. Yeah, I'll not say something new. I guess uh, the amount of amount of choices uh, with the, with the hardware, with the with the network uh, providers, uh, just the, the amount of choices that you can pick and, and choose is is uh, much much bigger than comparing to other other, uh, for example, yeah. which was mentioned before. <laughs> and and the, uh, for us, it's the ability. All right, for, for us, it's the ability. To Us to add our own network and, and fill the gaps which you can't do with the cross. And also the biodiversity ability to control um, devices so we're like shut off valves and our control foods all land quite different to the cross. I, I have a trouble to hear him well, um, whatever. Um, I think um, there are so many uh, examples, and here all the speakers have presented uh, through experience, real use cases, testifying the adoption of LoRaWAN everywhere, in Europe, in US, in Australia also, and the uh, rest of the world, Asia, Latam. So many examples also are available on the website of the Laura Alliance, and we will continue to uh, share and present new ones as they come. One and last thing, uh, you're all welcome to visit and lead um, The Laura Alliance will have a booth in the main hall, easy to find, and you will have um, a lot of demos and a wall of plenty of devices, water meters, typically pulse output uh, readers, and uh, other ones. So again, thanks to all speakers, and um, we will close here. Thank you.